this outdated bathroom needed a complete makeover. And my biggest challenge is that I'm attempting to do the entire makeover for only $500. This is going to be very tough because the average bathroom remodel in the US is over $12,000. I also thought I could complete this in two to three days, but a lot went wrong. Oh. I did this in the wrong side. Oh. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany and I like to take on projects that are out of my comfort zone. So join me while I make over this bathroom or lose my mind trying. <gasps> no. So this is the guest bathroom and I picked to redo this room specifically because I thought it would be easy. But to my surprise, I had my work cut out for me. I just didn't know it yet. Oops. I then decided to remove all the hardware from the wall since one of the things I'll be doing is painting. But with that being said, I'm gonna have to do some drywall repairs. Because I will be doing this in a budget, I won't be changing the mirror, but I will be building a new frame for it. And I was trying to be careful since I might use it as a template. Okay, you see that strip in the wall behind me? I hate those strips. I'm gonna put shelves over here. And on this side over here, I'm gonna have a picture hanging. So it's kind of in the way and I think it'll look weird if I put anything against the wall with a strip there. So I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna cover the seam with actual like drywall mud and try to make it as smooth as possible. Not only I'm trying to do this in a budget, but I'm trying to do this in just a few days because the last project took forever to finish, which was the laundry room. So I'm trying to give myself a short project this time, but I'm nervous about the drywall mud because I'm not really good at it. And I end up having to do multiple coats over several days to make the drywall look smooth. And I'm afraid that this is what's going to delay this project the most. And so are these nails, which took forever to take them out until I remember that I had a tool to take them out. Another thing that is not doing this bathroom any favors are these lights. They're just a little outdated and I'm gonna change them out for something a little bit more modern. Okay. So it looks like I'm gonna have to do some drywall repair just because there's anchors that they drill into the wall for the light fixture. So I have quite a bit of drywall repair. That, that, that one probably, and over there, and that whole strip. So, got my work cut out for me. It's not that bad, it's just that it takes time to dry, so I'm afraid that it, that's just gonna put me behind. I noticed that the old lights were off center from the vanity, so I was marking where the center was so that I can mount them correctly. That's how far off the center that was. Oh, this is stud right there. That's why it's off center. Oh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to mount it off center. So I don't plan on changing the floor because it's in good condition, plus not in the budget and like a lot more work to change the floors. So I'm gonna leave the floors, but the baseboard is damaged over here because when they built this house, they use MDF baseboards, which is stupid. Don't ever use MDF baseboards. If water hits it, it's just, it falls up, it's like, it's terrible, so it's damaged. So I'm gonna put new baseboards, take these out, uh, but I'm gonna leave the floor the way it is.
The drywall I'm gonna be using Easy Sand. So this thing pretty much cures in five minutes. It really cures in five minutes. So I have to work fast, but I like it because it dries quicker. It still takes a while to dry if you do like really thick coats, but I do like that because it dries, it cures in five minutes. If you have to do a second coat, it's a little bit more forgiving. You can do it right on top of it. I'm gonna try this to patch everything that I gotta patch. The joint compound mix should be smooth and creamy, kind of like pancake batter. I then apply the first layer of drywall compound, but because there's a seam there, I put drywall mesh on top and this will avoid the drywall cracking in the future. I then put more drywall compound on top. And this was the beginning of many coats of drywall mud. The good thing about the 5 minute drying compound is that it forces me to work quickly and I feel like I'm getting some practice but it almost dries too quickly, so I think next time I'm going to get one that gives me a little bit more working time, because then I could probably do a better job in less coats. So I just noticed that the toilet's leaking. It might have been my fault, because I'm working on that area. I'm sanding the edges of the wall so I can like do more coats. And there's a puddle, like a little puddle. Before. So I'm gonna tighten it and see if that fixes it. Hopefully that fixes it and it's simple because I don't want to mess with this toilet at all. Okay, we'll see if that fixes it. There's a nut right there and it was like loose. Like I could touch it with my hands and it was like super loose. Hopefully that fixes it and I don't have to deal with it. I continue to do more layers of drywall mud and when I thought that this would be the part of the project that would delay me the most, it wasn't. This was just the beginning. I am done for tonight. I did not expect this to take me most of the day. And I lost count how many coats of drywall mud I've done, but it's been quite a few. But I just want to make it look smooth, you know, I just don't want it to be noticeable that there's a seam there. Tomorrow, I might have like a couple touch-ups to do before I can paint, but then after that, I should be good to move forward. Are you pooping? No, I'm recording. Oh. I'm gonna be talking. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I, I saw your shoes and it looked like you were sitting on the toilets. I, I am sitting on the toilet. <laughs> I got a little impatient with how long the sanding and the drywall was taking, so I have my electric sander out. I'm like, oh, this would go quicker. And I don't want to do that before because I knew like it would be really dusty, but I'm like, oh, maybe it's not so bad. It's like a small space, it's very quick. It was bad. It was pretty bad. <laughs> Look at my hair. My hair isn't this white. I mean, I do have a few white hairs, but not this many. This is all drywall. Look, there. <laughs> there are my eyelashes, my eyebrows. I don't know why I thought this would be a good idea. I just got impatient, and this is what happens. <laughs> just made it worse. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. I tilted the pan too much and a like a big blob of drywall just fell on the floor. So I gotta clean that up. I'm finally done with the drywall. And when I said yesterday that I just had a few touch-ups to do. No, because it's daylight, I could see a lot better in here and there was a lot of imperfections and I wasn't happy with it, so. I fixed it, but I run out of drywall mud. So I went to the store and I got the 20 second easy sand instead of the five minute one. I mean, not 20 seconds, 20 minute drying uh, mud instead of the five minutes, which is what I should have done from the beginning because the 20 minute would have given me more time to maybe like work it a little bit better. The five minutes dry so fast, but I, I got it done. It took me like half a day. I want to prime the parts where I put drywall mud. So just that part I'm going to prime and then I can go ahead and paint everything. Oi. Ouch. Ouch. Okay. Oh, this is a mess in here. I first have to clean this mess. Oh my god. 
You might be thinking that I just lost my mind because I'm literally vacuuming the walls. But may I remind you that the dust went everywhere. I'm prepping for a paint by covering everything with plastic and a drop cloth because even though I'm rolling it, the paint still splatters a little bit everywhere. I primed the areas where I did the drywall repair to avoid the paint peeling in the future, but I decided not to prime the rest of the room since it's already painted. The color I went with is Timeless White, is that it? Yes. <laughs> I wanted this room to be light, lighter. It's, it's so small in here that a dark color can make the room look smaller. So I wanted a very bright color, so it's uh, kind of like an off-white color. Even though I'm doing this makeover in just a few days, I did take some time to plan it ahead of time. And I put together a mood board that kind of like let me visually see how everything is going to go together. Look at it. Just like that. One little wall with the window, like it looks so much better. All right, now to do the rest. Oof. I'm done with the first coat and I'm done for tonight. I am beat, so I'm gonna pick this back up tomorrow. It has to dry anyway, so I'm gonna do the second coat tomorrow, and then I'm gonna start tackling that cabinet. I'm gonna paint the cabinet, so I have to sand it down, paint it, and do that. But other than that, what do you think? It's a lot brighter in here. It also looks like very plain and boring, so I know, like everything is the same color now, but final touches, like the shelves that are gonna go above the toilet, the mirror, like there's gonna be a lot of decorative things in the bathroom that are gonna make it pop so the walls being like white and just like kind of blending in with everything else it's just kind of to give it that white canvas for everything else to pop so i can't wait but i need to get some sleep first so i'll see you tomorrow the color looks so good. Now that I can see it in the daylight, it looks so nice in here. It still needs a second coat, but it's uh, it dried up pretty well. The paint I'm using is actually a one coat paint, but I never trust that. It's usually a few spots where it doesn't cover really well, so I always do two coats. So excited. Paint's all done. And I have to say, I love the drywall work. It came out the way I wanted it. Took me forever. It's smooth. You can't tell that there was a seam, you know, in there. So I'm very, very happy with it. And this is not gray hair. That's paint. Paint. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tackle this vanity over here. I'm gonna sand it and paint it. I want to spray the door so that it's smooth, but I don't wanna spray paint in here just because of the prep process. I will literally have to cover everything, put in the walls. Maybe I should have done that before the walls and then I could have sprayed over here didn't think of it. So I'm just gonna try to make these parts look as smooth as possible. We'll see how that comes out. The countertop, I think I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to take the countertop off because I'm doing this in a budget. And this is a weird size countertop, it's like 27 inches. And I couldn't really find anything pre-made that was lower price. Part of when I put my plan together on all the decor and the colors and everything, I kept in consideration the color of the countertop to make sure that you know it will still go with everything but anyways let's get started i'm 
want to take these strips out and reattach them because I think it'll make it easier to paint. So I'm going to clean this with crook cutter to get all of the dirt out, clean it really well. And then I'm going to sand it. And I have this like pad sander things that I'm going to try uh, because these edges here are all curved. So I want to make sure I sand everything. This door is not wood, it's actually MDF. So it's like a wrap door. So I have to sand it and then I have to use a bonding primer. I'm gonna use bin primer to make sure that the primer sticks to it. It's hard for any paint to stick to it. So I'm gonna make sure to prime it before I paint it. I'm gonna sand this with a power sander, even though last time I used the power sander in here, what I'm gonna do first, I don't think it's gonna be that dusty like the drywall does, which is very fine and just, it just goes everywhere. Two, I'm gonna take like a really like wet napkin, like it's soaked, so I'm gonna pass it so that way that it's wet, so the dust doesn't like, it doesn't spread out as much, basically. I was gonna hand sand it, but I just, because this is like laminated, stuff like i really want to make sure that i get a good sanding on it because it's very important that the primer sticks to this otherwise it, it'll peel off eventually so i don't want that to happen <laughs> isn't that an interesting color like i sand it it just turned yellow I wonder what kind of material it is, if it's like some kind of plastic or why does it do that? When I feel it like all the way down here where it's exposed, it actually feels like MDF. So that's why I was pretty sure this is like some sort of wrap material when it's laminated or whatever, but it turns yellow. The doors didn't do that, but this yellow, so I don't know. Since I didn't want to spray the inside of the bathroom, I used a foam brush to paint the edges and a foam roller to prime the rest of the cabinet. I almost forgot the toe pick. Usually the primer leaves a rough surface, so I sanded it with 320 grit to make it smooth before I painted it. I'm gonna be using a pneumatic sprayer. I don't really like using this with regular paint. They're not meant to use regular paint because they don't have enough pressure, but I'm kind of lazy sometimes, and I don't want to get my big sprayer out because it just takes so much more to clean. And I only have a quart of paint, so even though it's, it's giving me trouble before, I can still get a smooth finish out of it. But if you don't have any kind of sprayer, you can use a foam roller, just like I did inside. That also gives a smooth finish. I just got done putting everything away outside. I got that door done before it got dark. It's about eight o'clock right now and all I have to do is this cabinet right here. I have to paint this cabinet. I mean, I have a lot more to do, but all I'm doing today is painting this cabinet. And then tomorrow I'll go ahead and do the second coat on the cabinet and the door. I'm 
so excited to finally see some green on this cabinet. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I like white. Most of my laundry cabinets are white, but for this bathroom, for this space, I just, uh, just really like this color and I wanted to try it. I have a problem. After I got done painting this and I'm staring at it, I absolutely hate the countertop. <laughs> I thought I could live with it. I have never liked this countertop, by the way. And unfortunately, this is all the countertops that are throughout my house. It's in the master bathroom and it's in the kitchen. They all look like this, they're ugly. And because of budget and time, I decided that I was not going to do the countertop because I don't want to turn this into a major project. But I think that now that I painted the cabinet and it looks nice, like this nice green, I feel like now this sticks out. And not in a good way. <laughs> we'll see what I come up with. I'm gonna sleep on this and see what I come up with. The next day I made up my mind and I decided that I will change the countertop. So I went to Lowe's and I picked up a 10 foot board. I actually had a couple calculations depending on whether I picked an eight foot board or a 10 foot board, but I picked the board that was warped the least because everything here looked in pretty rough shape. And I wasn't too happy with how the grain looked, but I think I can make this work. And so far out of the $500 budget, I've spent $150. Let's get rid of this ugly thing. First things first, I shut the water off to make sure that I didn't flood the bathroom. I then disconnected all the plumbing so that I can remove the sink. My goal was to reuse the sink and just change the faucet, but when I tried to remove it, it was really glued, so I tried using a pry bar. And this would cause a major problem. Oh! Okay, I guess I'm gonna need a new sink. I'm gonna be honest though, I wanted a square sink and I didn't buy one to keep the cost low. But now, I guess I don't have a choice, so... I get the sink that I want. But I still gotta take the countertop off and I'm really hoping I don't break anything. More drywall repair, my favorite thing to do. I'm gonna be really careful on this part so I don't break the mirror because I would just cry. I'm looking forward to making the frame for the mirror so I don't wanna break it. <laughs> small problems one the drywall i gotta do drywall repair the second problem is so this countertop like overlapped the cabinet so you see how where it's painted and where it's not so i decided not to do the second coat on the cabinet because i knew that i was gonna have to paint this edges when i do the second coat i gotta make sure that i sand this so it just kind of looks even and again i just gotta repair some of the drywall so it's not noticeable after I got done doing a coat of drywall mud, I went outside to set up and start making the countertop. talking i'm just talking to the camera i'm not crazy okay are you sure no okay 
So this board looks pretty rough, and I wish they had better looking boards, but I'm trying to work with what I have. Basically, I'm trying to avoid the knots, or at least the bad ones. I'm also gonna cut the edges off, so that way it has a flat edge, and I'm gonna glue them together. But before I do all that, I need to make the surface really smooth. Now, I know that not everyone has a planer laying around because they are actually pretty pricey, but there's other options. You can either sand, it's just if, if it has a rough surface, you'll be sanding for a while or buy like better quality wood. I bought that wood because I knew that I had the planer and I could make it smooth, but you don't have to have one of these. This is actually the first time I, I've, I've used one. Um, my dad overheard me talking and saying that I needed a planer for some of my future wood projects and he got me one for Christmas, which was really, really nice. makes a mess. Look at this. <laughs> what a mess. It's like everywhere. It makes a huge difference though. It really, it made it really smooth. After I got the boards plain, I got the table saw ready to cut the edges off each side so that I can have a flat side to glue them to each other. I stopped because I'm starting to realize that I don't think I like the pattern. I don't like how it looks. It looks, it looks too rustic and it's not the look that I am going for. So I'm thinking of just cutting thinner pieces, just glue them together like a big butcher block. But I've never done that before. I'm kind of having issues where it's also like not super straight, so I don't know if the board's straight or if I need to change my, bra my blade. I can tell that it's dull, so I'm gonna do that first. I see gaps and I'm just worried that that becomes a problem in the future. I mean, I can clamp them and glue them together, but I'm afraid that it'll separate in the future. I just realized I don't even have a new blade for this. I thought I did, but this is a 10 inch and what I have is a 12 inch, which is for my miter saw. So I have to run to the store real quick. And I guess while I'm at it, I'll get the new sink. I'm back, so I'm getting ready to change this. It's about to get dark, so I'm gonna try to at least cut the countertop, cut all the pieces, and then I can get ready for a glue up tomorrow. I'm gonna take this out. Oh. doing <laughs> it definitely looks a lot better I like the small pieces rather than the full grain I am a little bit worried though about it splitting in the future I can tell like some of the pieces are a little bit warped I think they'll be fine once I clamp them and glue them but I don't know I've never done anything like this before I like to try new things I have been wanting to do something like this because eventually I would like to make cutting boards I think that's a cool project that I would like to do and this is a similar process And this was the end of this day, but before I put everything away, I wanted to see what the countertop looked like in the space. I feel a lot better this morning about this countertop. I actually test fitted it yesterday, and also I wanted to visualize what it looked like in the space, and I'm liking what I'm seeing. I was worried about the gaps, but I think I can take care of that in some of the warp pieces between the table saw and the planer. I can straighten them out as much as I can, and when I do the glue up, it should be fine. I'm excited to get this done, so let's get started. After I put each piece of wood to make the grain pattern I wanted, I numbered them so that I could put them in order when it was time to glue them. I then used a combination of the planer and the table saw to make each board as straight as possible. 
I should have made a jig to make a straight cut on the table saw, but that's something that I didn't learn until later on in this project. After I was happy with each of the wood strips, I put them all together on pipe clamps. Because the pipe clamps can dent the wood, I put a piece of scrap wood on each end. I also used parchment paper at the bottom for any glue drips since my work table is made out of wood. And I'm also doing the glue up in two separate pieces, which is why I'm using blue tape to separate them. This is so that I can run each piece through the planer since the whole thing won't fit. And then I'll glue the two pieces together. So this is the part where it got challenging for me. I made a huge mistake and that was not making sure that I had enough glue to do this. I had a big bottle of glue and a smaller bottle, both half full. And I thought that would be enough. The second mistake was not watching a video of how to do this efficiently, because if you notice here, I'm gluing two boards at the same time, but I'm also leaving the back of each of those boards without the glue, which I don't realize until later. The third mistake was to attempt to do both pieces at the same time, but the reason for that is because I only have these three clamps and I wanted to do it all at once. Otherwise, I would have had to wait a day to do the second part. At this point in the glue up, I'm already running out of glue. I'm trying to squeeze every little bit out, but I'm not worried because I still have the little bottle left and I haven't realized that I still have half of the wood that still needs glue. Now I've realized that I still have half of the glue up to do and that I definitely don't have enough glue. I'm also panicking because the glue is starting to set. This video sped up, but it was actually time consuming to do each board, which is why I said earlier, I should have done it one piece at a time. I finally ran out of glue. So I desperately ran to my shed, hoping that I found another bottle of glue, but I didn't have any luck. So my only choice at this point is to beat the glue bottle against the wood so every little bit of glue comes out and hope that that's enough. And I made it. I was able to glue each piece and after that was done, I went and found every single clamp I own and put it on this thing. Unfortunately, I had the microphone off the entire time, which is why I had to narrate the entire thing, but that was probably a good thing because I was probably swearing the entire time. The last thing I had to do that day was a second coat on the cabinet, and I actually ended up doing a third coat later on. Are you gonna need the what? Thing? The planer? No. The chop saw? No. The table saw? No. What the hell? Oh, the air compressor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is a. That's what this is. This one is the. Ouch. Ah. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, it's shaking. It's shaking. Come on. Come on. Okay. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Ah. Okay. Whew. After we got done setting up for the day, the weather decided to do what the weather does. Okay. Ready, ready. It's raining. It's freaking raining. It's like raining a lot. You gotta love Florida. <laughs> All right. It is very common in Florida to rain or storm for a few minutes and then it's done for the rest of the day. And the sky often looks sunny on one side and stormy on the other.
I did most of the glue cleanup on the top the day before, so I mostly had to clean up the bottom. I probably should have covered the pipes with tape or something. Oh my god, I hope this stuff comes out easy. Huh. Not terrible. It just looks like so much, you know, like it seems overwhelming. kind of satisfying kind of there were parts that were not that satisfying because it was hard to take off i don't know if there was too much squeeze out or if i just didn't clean it soon enough anyways i'm still learning so uh some of it came out super easy some of it was i just i had to dig a little bit to get the glue out um i got as much as i could and then the planer will do the rest I'm ready to pass these through the planer, but I was a little bit nervous because they look so rough. Like after taking out all the glue and everything, like they just look rough. They're very uneven. I looked up a tutorial online to see how to pass it through where I can get a flat surface because neither the bottom nor the top is, is flat at all. So I'm gonna start planing the bottom, just, you know, as a test. And I had to build a jig that was pretty simple to build. Why is it not going? Oh my God, why? Why? And then I used shims to level this out so to make sure that it was not rocking and then to secure it in place i use hot glue in different places including the shims so that way it doesn't move when i'm passing it through the planer Look at that difference. Like, look at this and look at this. Like, oh my God. It's like night and day. Like, I was pretty worried just because it looks so rough, but I swear that planer does magic. <laughs> and this is just the bottom, so that's where you see all the knots and stuff. I can't wait to do the top. I'm gonna plane this one at the bottom also, then flip them over and then do the top. making sure they're the same height so that I can glue them together and then the rest I will do with sanding. But that's the camera top. What are you doing, Misty? What is that? You have me to throw that? That's too big. Okay, fine, just one. But you should find your toy.
I followed the same process as before except that this time I only had that middle section to glue so it went smoothly. The monkey noises help. Oi. I got it. I got it. Ugh. I got it. Okay. Sorry. <sighs> what happened? Before I started on the countertop, I worked on making the wall smooth around the vanity by sanding it and doing another coat of drywall mud. I think I'm getting better at this. It came out really good. I love it. This is the back, that's the front. I actually like the back better because I like the knots, but this is a countertop that's gonna have a sink and there's water, so knots, not a good idea. So, I'm gonna have to use the clean side here. I think I did a good job like trying to hide the knots and I think like these are gonna end up where the sink cutout is. The ironic part about this countertop, most of it's gonna be cut out <laughs> because the countertop is actually like, gonna take most of it. Kinda sad that I spent so much time building this and I'm just gonna cut most of it out. It came out great, I'm very happy with it. And once I sand it, I can do the um, sink cutout and we can test it and see how it looks. Let's go test fit it and see what it looks like. <laughs> nice. Very nice. What do you think? I think that's gonna work. I'm just not sure if to make this a little bit taller. I don't want it super tall like it was before. I feel like with the short backsplash, it'll look better. The tall backsplash, it's, I don't know, for me, I feel like it feels outdated. The backsplash does serve a purpose, but I'm wondering if it's too short. Should go there. Maybe. Before I do anything else though, I need to make this a straight edge. Cause it's uh, pretty like, you know, not straight. better and put uh, painter's tape to avoid the chipping because I'm cutting cross grain. It's not too bad but there's just one bad chip over here and that's gonna be the edge that's visible unfortunately. But I think I do have a couple more repairs to do before I can seal this so it's not a big deal. So I have enough wood left from the countertop from the last board to do the backsplash but they are the pieces I took out because it's pretty warped, so I don't want to deal with fixing them. So instead, I'm going to use a new board, which is the board I'm going to use for the shelves that I'm going to put above the toilet. It's an eight-foot board, and I don't need ne anywhere near that uh, for the shelves, so I'm just going to use a couple thin pieces out of this to make the backsplash. What I'm doing here is I'm using an MDF board with a straight edge as a reference to the fence on my saw so that I make one of the sides of the board perfectly straight, which is something I should have done on every piece of the countertop, but I didn't learn this until watching some tutorials later. And now I'm just cutting the board down to the sides of the backsplash. I got the backsplash cut, but I couldn't decide whether to do the side splash the same size or if to do it a little bit smaller. So I tried a couple of different pieces. 
Like I have this one right here, which is much smaller. And I think this looks better. I don't know. Like I like the, the small backsplash. See, it's not as tall as it used to be. I just think it looks better if it's cleaner on the side. But I still want to put something because this thing's pretty big. And I know water can get in here. So the goal is to not have water against the wall. I think I like how it looks better with the little tiny piece than with this. So the sink comes with a template. I'm just gonna cut it out. Obviously, like measure it where the middle is. <laughs> I'm gonna drill holes and with the jigsaw, I'm gonna cut all the way around. And that should be the hole for the sink. Oh my, it's tearing so bad. I mean, it's not gonna be visible, but it bothers me how much it's actually tearing. Ouch, still tearing. Tore pretty bad on there. The overlap of the sink's gonna cover it though. Gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> How pretty. It looks so nice. There's nothing better than the feeling of like seeing your project come together. My vision is coming together. I'm so excited. Tomorrow I'll finish the little things like cutting the backsplash and after that I can stain it and finish it and seal it but I think I'm going to do that along with the shelves because this and the shelves are going to be the same color and then I also have to build the mirror frame which is also going to be made out of wood. I haven't decided on the color on that yet but I'll figure it out. I'm glad that I decided to change the countertop and I didn't have to spend a fortune to build it. However, the sink was not planned so that might throw me off budget. Here's where I am so far with how much I've spent. The next step is to build a mirror frame. Now this is what I had on my mood board as my inspiration. But that was if I kept my previous countertop. But because now I have a wood countertop, I changed my mind on the type of mirror frame that I want. So I will be building a gold mirror frame from scratch and I found this mirror online for $432 to use as my inspiration, but I'll be spending a fraction of that. So the first piece I'm using is a corner piece that I got at the store. It's kind of like a L-shaped piece. And you'll see in a little bit why this piece is important to making this frame. But first, I'm gonna cut it down to a manageable size because this thing is like eight feet tall. I don't know if you can hear that, but somebody's flying a fucking drone. It's very loud. But before I cut into a manageable size, I made this jig over here so I can cut thin pieces like this because what happens is when you cut a thin piece, it can snap and it has happened to me before. So I just basically put two pieces of melamine together so I can cut it either at an angle or straight on and the wood just doesn't snap on me. So the plan here is to put this decorative piece here. I actually got this from Lowe's. I like the style, but I'm gonna put it here on the corner piece and that's gonna leave the little recess piece. This part is gonna overlap the mirror. And I only wanna do these two pieces. It's a little bit simpler than what my inspiration mirror is, but I do want something that's decorative, but not too much, if that makes sense. So I think this is gonna be perfect, but I do think this is a little too tall. So I'm gonna have to shave it off. Misty, hi, do you wanna play? Again? I'm 
not a big fan of cutting really thin pieces through the table saw, but that's why I use this yellow push block so that I can keep all of my fingers. That is gonna work. Oh my god, it's gonna look so pretty. Oh. So when I was showing you before that it has this little lip over here, this is gonna sit right there. And then this decorative piece goes on top, but it overlays into the mirror. So it's like perfect, like this corner piece is just perfect for putting this together. The importance of test pieces. So after I cut my rough pieces that I need for the actual mirror, anything extra, I'm doing the uh, practice cuts because this trim, for some reason, it confused me on how to actually cut it. So it took me a couple of tries. And now I'm actually going to staple this together and I'm using one of these because they have like really small staples. I'm actually gonna glue it also, but I'm gonna do the staples so it doesn't move out of place. But same thing, I'm gonna do a test piece first to make sure that it works. And that way I don't ruin the actual frame when I'm trying to put it together. That's why we do test pieces. Try to use the tiniest clamps. It's kind of hard because I can't lay it flat. So that's why, oh, maybe I can do it like that. Ouch. It worked. It worked, yes. Just have to make sure that I can get it as close to the edge as possible. So I think a little bit of glue and some staples. And we're good. Oh, this thing's really hard. That worked out great, didn't it? There you go. Now let's cut them at an angle and put them together and see if it's gonna work. So I, <laughs> I put this in the wrong side. All right, let me, <laughs> let me go cut this real quick. Oh my God. <laughs> Ooh, look at that much better. So I'm done with my test pieces and I think this is gonna work so I'm gonna finish cutting these down to size and then I'm gonna miter them and put them together and hope that I get it right otherwise I have to go back to the store and buy more trim. Okay how am I gonna... Oh. Come on, why, why are you doing this to me? Seriously struggling here, come on. I'm just trying to find a flat surface to put this on because I have to press against it to do the, the staples on it. So I'm trying to find a flat surface, which is hard when I have the clamps on. Okay, here we go. Okay, one. If I can get like a couple of the staples in, I can take the clamps out, it'll be fine. I would say that one is a success so far. Oh, three more to go. Oh, come on. Why are you doing that? Okay, that one is fine. Why are the other ones are so weird? Why? What's going on on this area? You can't go all the way through. What the hell? There. That one's fine. What's wrong with you three? Maybe one more. Nope. Okay. It's a good thing I'm using glue. I did this in the wrong side. Oh. All right. It's a good thing it's only one nail to take out. Let's try that again. I have it on the correct side now. Why is it doing it like that again? Oh my God. I don't know what I'm doing wrong with this thing. It didn't even catch. It's not even catching. There. Nope, there's something on this side that's not. Come on. Why doesn't this, I don't understand. Why is it not going through? Yes. 
I have it all put together. That was uh, kind of annoying. <laughs> I did not think the stapler was going to give me trouble. The reason I'm using a hand stapler instead of the battery one that I have is because the staples have to be so small. Let's go uh, do the miters and hope that it comes together with no issues. So I'm lining up my test pieces here. So that's what I want. So I'll take that and that. And I want to replicate that cut. 45 degree angle. Double check. Yep. So the mirror is 24 by 34 inches and the way I measured it is this part right here, this corner piece is the one that has to match that measurement. Not the outside frame, not the uh, peak here, is this part right here because then the rest is gonna overlap. And I'm gonna use this here, if I can figure out the right angle. It needs to go that way. Test pieces, test pieces, test pieces. Okay, that's what I want, all right? This is the bottom piece, but I need to do the same on the other. So I need to put it like that. Okay, so that's what I need it to be. Nice. I love it. I don't have the type of clamp that can clamp a frame and hold it for a long period of time. Otherwise I would have used wood glue. But uh, since I don't have that, I'm gonna use CA glue instead since it dries right away. And then I'm gonna use the stapler gun to staple the back so I can keep the miter together. It's taped so that the glue doesn't glue to the plywood. Sorry, there was a bug. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm so sorry about that. I had to briefly swallow my panic and come back because I was afraid that the glue would dry. Okay. So, give me a second. I still need to have my moment. Okay, moment over. Let's keep going. This one's a little challenging because I don't like to spray it too close to the glue. Frame is done. I just gotta clean it up a bit. It has some uh, glue residue and I'll probably sand this part of the frame because this is what I cut through the saw. So it does have some little rough spots from the uh, saw blade. Should I go test fit it? It fits, I just... Uh just needs uh, to be secured. But oh my God, look at that. Oh, this is gonna be so pretty. I love it. I freaking love it. Oh, come on. There you go. Finally got it in, but only one side of the miter. <laughs> there, maybe? Eh, I don't trust it. There. I'm getting ready to paint and I'm so excited because I can't wait to see what this looks like all finished and painted. I'm gonna be using spray paint. This is spray paint that I already had and I tested both of these colors. I like the brighter one better, but I don't have a lot left. So I think what I'm gonna do, since I know I'm gonna need two coats because the wood sucks up a lot of paint, I'm going to do the first coat with this color and then I'm gonna do the top coat with the color that I like. Before I start painting, I still have to sand real quick just to get rid of some of the rough spot from cutting the corner piece.
battery died. I was like hand sanding the edges to take uh, like the sharpness off because it's kind of sharp usually. So I like sanding, uh, sanding them just slightly by hand just to remove how sharp, sharp they are. I'm gonna paint the back first because it's a mirror. So when you put it against the mirror, you can kind of see it. So I want to paint the back so that it matches, uh, especially that lip part uh, that goes over the mirror. I've run out, so while that dries, I'm gonna go get some more spray paint. I actually get a bonus gold leaf. You see that? Okay, so while this dries, I'm going to work on the countertop. On my last video, I built the countertop for the bathroom out of wood. And while the frame dries, I want to go ahead and stain the countertop. Before staining, I had to do some prep work, like fixing some spots and sanding. The staining I'm doing is a two-step process while we'll be using whitewash and then Puritan pine stain on top. But I tested these on the cutout of the sink first to make sure that it was gonna work. I'm ready to do the whitewash. And the way I made this was one part paint and one part water. First, I'm gonna use water to raise the grain and do a quick sand just to kind of get rid of any fuzzies. So when I do the finish on it, it doesn't get fuzzy. Second, before I start the whitewash, I'm going to do the pre-stain so that the whitewash, uh, whitewash goes on evenly. Now, this is for oil base and the whitewash I'm using is water base because I'm using just regular wall paint. I looked online and it said it can be done as long as this is completely dry. Uh, I know it's ideally you want a water base pre-stain if you're gonna do a water-based stain, but I don't have one and I don't wanna keep like throwing money at this, so I'm just gonna use what I have. Ah, damn it. Oh, Jesus. Okay, I think I actually got it all done though. Ow, come on. What the hell? Holy crap. Really? There you go, ouch. Whew. After I apply the whitewash, I wiped it off right away. Now it's really important that it gets completely wiped off. Make sure you don't leave any residue because otherwise it will look spotty. This is something that I learned when I did my test piece. Now I have to leave this to dry before I do the stain on top, so I'm gonna go back to work on the frame. I have a problem. I don't like the color of this frame. I do and I don't. So. I went inside with my test piece, the stain piece of the countertop and this test piece that I painted. I don't like how it looks together. I actually like how this one looks together with the countertop. This one's too bright, almost too gold. Overall, I like this color better, but it just doesn't go well with the countertop in my opinion. And this one does. So uh, I am a little frustrated because I don't think I have enough to even paint this thing. I don't know, I'm gonna do a code and see and hope that that's enough. 
just as I suspected, I didn't have enough paint so I had to go to the store and get more and my neighbor cows were judging me. So now it's antiquing time, which requires me to go to my crafting cabinet and find some sort of paint that I can put on this that gives it that antique look. I apply brown acrylic paint with a brush and then wipe it off. And the paint left behind into the crevices is what gives it the antique look. It looks so good. I love how it turned out and I'm very happy with it. So I'm ready to do the stain on this. I'm gonna do the pre-stain again to avoid like this looking blotchy with the stain. I'm gonna put this on, let it dry, 15 to 30 minutes, somewhere around that. And then I'm gonna do the stain. The stain I used was Puritan Pine. Getting to this color combination took a few tries and I actually tested a few of my stains together until I got to a color that I liked. The whitewash lightens the wood and it kills the yellow of the pine and then the Puritan Pine gets it just enough color to look right. Just like I did with the whitewash, I immediately wiped off the excess of the stain. That looks so pretty. Okay, I'm ready to put that on. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of glue. Uh, I found some Gorilla Glue that I have and I'm also gonna nail it to secure it. It is kind of warped a little. You see how it come, comes up up there? I'm afraid that the glue is not gonna be enough or I'm gonna have to sit here for a while, hold it until it cures. And I'm just gonna try to do the nails where they're not as noticeable maybe. Maybe I have to touch it up. I don't know, we'll see. I, I won't do too many nails, just enough to hold it in place and know that it's not gonna fall off. Okay, I have to do this kind of quickly because this does cure. Dab. Okay, so little bit, little bit, little bit. I put glue on the mirror. Oh, it's not working, not working. Ugh. I need the nail gun, but I can't reach it. Okay, glue, useless. I'm sure it'll be fine when it dries, but right now, I need this. There you go. Oh, let me take that little bit of glue off the mirror before it dries. We're good. Oh, wow. <laughs> it looks so nice.
I don't like it. Like something isn't right. <sighs> I like each individual piece. I like the countertop. I like how the countertop goes well with the green. I like the mirror. But I don't think how it all goes together looks good or cohesive in any way. I am trying to purposely match modern and old stuff together. And I'm trying to make that work. I looked at it before with the samples. Like, I mean, I had the uh, sample piece of the countertop and the uh, sample piece of the mirror frame color in here. And it seemed fine at the time. But now that I'm looking at it all together, I don't think I like it. Let me think on this and I'll be back. I got it. I went and took a nap because I was so frustrated and overwhelmed. So I woke up with a fresh mind and I went back to my sample to try to figure out where I went so wrong with the colors together because I do look at all the samples put together. I know exactly what happened. I do and I don't. Let me explain. This is the color that I decided to go on. This is when I changed my mind on the gold. So first I painted it with a bright gold and then I decided that it was gonna be too bright, which is actually exactly what this looks like. No wonder I don't like it. And then I went and looked at this color and I'm like, oh, this color goes really well with the countertop. I don't know what happened. Maybe it changed dramatically. Like you can tell, like it, it's, the color is so different. What that means is that I have to take the mirror off that I just secured and glued and nailed in place and paint it again. Please don't break. I was so scared thinking that this frame could break at any moment and all the work would have been a waste of time. Ooh. Okay, we're good. We are good. antiquing layer that's underneath this. I only did one coat of spray paint and I can still see it, it almost looked like it started to antique and I like that. So it's like very, very light, very subtle. And it's perfect. I'm gonna leave it like that. Remember that my inspirational mirror was $432? Well, I spent $68 in materials for the frame and that's a savings of $364. And even though I spent quite a bit more than I thought I would on this mirror, I am so happy with how it turned out. Even though I had my setbacks, I generally enjoy making this frame and I'm happy that I could pull it off. Here's where I am with the overall spendings. And I have $153 left in my budget to finish this bathroom. 
So now to finish everything, I have a long list of things to complete and hopefully it will go smoothly. <gasps> no! So I have a lot to do today, but the first thing I'm gonna do is the vanity light up there because I wanna see what all of this looks like together. I haven't finished the countertop yet. I still have to do the clear coat on it, but before I take it outside to do that, I wanna do the vanity light first. I just realized I have a problem. There is not a junction box in here. So I called my dad and he said that I should use a junction box. So I looked up online and apparently this is a shallow box that I can just mount on the wall so I don't have to do a hole and it's called a pancake box. So I just put this on and I realized that it is not going to be flush. It's just going to be like a little tiny gap, which means that I have to make a hole in the wall. I made a hole in the wall using my multi-tool and also being very careful that I wouldn't hit the power line. Huh. All the patching work, gone. Come on, there you go. The next day, I decided to mount the light fixture and little did I know, I was about to go through all five stages of grief of this light fixture. Is it weird that it overlaps the mirror? But it's a little funny. It's not funny. It is, it's a little funny. <laughs> what if I turn them upside down? I don't know. What do you think? I think it'll be a bitch to dust. I don't hate it though. I don't hate it either. I didn't like the vanity lights facing up. I didn't like them overlapping the mirror. So my two choices were to move them up, which means more drywall work because I just made a big old hole to put those there or to buy new ones that are smaller or different style. And to save my sanity and not do more drywall work, I decided to buy new ones. But they'll take a few days to get here. So in the meantime, I'm gonna work on everything else. So my plan right now is to do the shelves that I wanna put above the toilet. I've actually done this before on the last bathroom remodel I did, and I really like how it turned out. So I'm gonna do it again on this bathroom. I basically bought these metal shelves that you mount to the wall and then you buy a two by eight and if it's perfectly on that shelf you just cut it to size stain it to whatever color and uh pretty simple installation all right now i gotta go inside and mount the brackets and see how this is gonna look these are the brackets I wish I could see what that actually looks like, but I can't from here. I guess I'll watch the video back. <laughs> I 
tried to use the strip anchor and it didn't go in. So it came with these type of anchors too. So I'm just gonna use one of these. That anchor is not gonna work, shit. Oh, Woo. came right out. <laughs> I was worried that I would, it will break the wall even bigger. Okay, I think I have anchors just like this. So let me see if I can find them. So this is my workshop and I don't use it as a workshop because of how messy it is. And I've been too embarrassed to show it, but this will be one of my near future projects because I'm kind of tired of sitting up outside and getting rained on. Yes. Got him. That's really in there. I like it, but I think they look beefy. Like they're, they're very thick compared to the countertop because the countertop is thinner since I had to plane it to make it smooth. So I think of what I'm gonna do is plain these to make them thinner, like the countertop. Also, they might be too wide for the space. So maybe I'll cut them off a little bit too. I don't know. I might stare at this for like the next 10 minutes and decide, but, <laughs> uh, but so far, man, this is coming together. A lot of times when I spend too long on a project, I'm like, oh, I just wouldn't be done. But, you know, these, seeing it come together, it's like, it really motivates me to like, come, just, just get it done. So let's go fix these. I used the planer to get the board to the thickness that I wanted. And I also cut about an inch off the shelves. I don't think there's a rule of how thick or why they should be. I'm just going with what looks right in this space. <laughs> Perfecto. Love it. Oh yeah. I'm gonna sand these real quick with 220 grit and then after that, I'm gonna stain them. I'm doing pre-stain first so that the wood doesn't look blotchy when I stain it, but I'm gonna stain it the same color that I did the countertop, which is a white wash. And then when that dries, I do Puritan pine on top. I made the whitewash by mixing one part paint and one part water. And then I applied it by wiping it on and then wiping off the excess. While that dried, I grabbed some baseboards I already had from previous projects and I painted them. Now that everything was dried, it was time to stain the shelves using Puritan pine. After a second coat of paint on the baseboard, I measure the space to cut it to size. Okay, 
This one, I gotta cut a hair out of it. This one, however, I don't know what I was measuring, but uh, I cut it really short. So the trim behind the toilet won't fit in one piece because it's between the cabinet and the wall and the toilet's in the way so it just won't make it. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut that trim in the middle and splice it together. Yep, that's going to work. Perfect. Okay, next piece. Out of battery. Damn it. No, you're not. No. Shit. Stay there. Okay. I'm done. So I know I'm going like back and forth between projects, but I'm just trying to be efficient because it's gonna be dark in a couple hours. So I wanna get the first coat of polyurethane on the countertop, the shelves, and that way tomorrow I can do two more coats throughout the day and finish that off. I did a total of three coats of polyurethane and made sure to sand in between. I normally like to do the sanding in between with 320 grit because it makes the surface really smooth. After the third coat, I wet sanded by hand with 400 grit, then I did a coat of wipe on poly which makes the wood feel very smooth like glass. I normally don't do so many coats but I wanted to make sure that the countertop was sealed since there will be water around it. While the clear coat was drying, it was time for me to figure out what to do with this wall. But before I do that, let me take you back to a few weeks ago when I was still planning this bathroom and I went drifting trying to find the perfect frame. And then I found her. I brought her with me because I really like the frame, but the plan is to replace the picture. Definitely replace the picture. Although, <laughs> Can you imagine if I just leave that picture? Anyone that goes to the bathroom sits on the toilet. She's just staring at you. What I want to do with this frame is take the picture out, of course, but I noticed that it's nailed in. So hopefully I can take this out without, you know, like ruining the actual frame or the glass. And then this insert here, I want to paint it uh, just because it looks, I don't know, like it makes the picture look old. I'm going to paint the frame the same color as the mirror. So I'm going to use the rest of my spray paint to do that so that that matches nicely. Is that okay? No? doing it anyways. Oh, it's just like falling apart. I don't know that that's a good thing. Well, I guess I'm gonna be taking this whole thing out.
There you go. Well, that wasn't terrible. Oh, wait, this has a date. Oh, let's read this. 1953. Wow. 1953. Look at that. What does that say? Riggs? What? But no brighter than now? Come on. Doesn't have a date here, so. Well, the mat is intact, mostly. That's good. That's really good. Oh, I'm happy. I wasn't sure <laughs> this was gonna work. All right, as rough as this as this look is actually in pretty good shape, so I can reuse this. I'm gonna paint it, and the uh, glass is good. I think I could, yes, I can remove it, which means I can paint the frame without having to tape around the glass, so that's a big plus. This, I can't really reuse. This one's rough. So I think I'm, I'll see what I have laying around the house that I can use instead, but that's not a big deal. All right, let's do it. Uh, I don't think this nails are gonna let me take it out. Oh, wait, wait, maybe, maybe, maybe. Come on, come on, come on. Just a little bit, little bit, little bit. Little bit more. Ah, there, there. Be very, very, very careful. Maybe. Oh my God, this is gonna break. Okay, no, no, there it is, there it is. Okay, ah, don't scratch, don't scratch. Okay, I gotta put this somewhere safe. When I first got the frame, I was gonna keep it the way it was, but then I got a closer look and I saw that it was pretty beat up and I also wanted it to match the mirror, so I decided to paint it. All right, so now, I'm gonna go to my spray paint stash and see if I can find something for that mat. Um, no, it's too dark. Hmm. I think that'll work. Who would have thought that years of hoarding spray paint would have started to pay off? I don't like it. I don't want to have to buy another can of spray paint. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to antique the frame for the uh, picture. Now I'm gonna do a very light antiquing because uh, on the last video I did the antiquing on the mirror and ended up not liking it at all. So I'm just gonna do a very, very light antiquing. Last time I tried to antique, I used acrylic brown paint, but it darkened the frame too much and someone in the comments suggested that I diluted it with water. I'm also trying black because I think it will look a little bit better than brown.
all done. It looks great. Now it looks great out here, but I'm gonna go look at it inside with the bathroom lighting to make sure that I like it. I think it looks good. That's a go. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like it. I broke it. I was almost done too. I was about to put it together. Ugh. Okay, I think, I think I'm gonna go to Lowe's and see if they have plexiglass that they can cut to the size. Otherwise this is trash. That was actually an easy fix and it wasn't that expensive to get the glass. It was like eight bucks or so. So I'm, <laughs> I'm glad because, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I can't win. So I just cracked this as I was putting it. And I'm like, yeah, maybe it's not noticeable in the front. It's very noticeable, very. I had hopes that maybe, maybe today I could potentially finish the bathroom. I can't believe this is happening. So I went to Hobby Lobby because they make custom frames, so I figured they would have inserts for this frame, but everything they had in stock was too small, so I had to have one cut to size. The mat is more than the frame and the glass combined. This was the most expensive $7 frame I've ever bought. Maybe I should have done something cute like this and call it a day. The 
picture I used for this frame, I found it online on pexels.com where you can find a lot of free pictures to download and then I had it printed to size. I don't have anything to put back here as the backing. Um, I could put the old one, but it's broken and falling apart from when I took it out. So I think what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna put this broken piece here as the backing. And since I got this brown paper from when I got the glass, I'll kind of use that to cover it. And I think I should be fine. I mean, like nobody looks at the back of the pictures. For the amount that I spent trying to make this work, I probably could have just bought one already made, uh, but I will say I am very happy with how it looks. All right, so now that I'm finally done with that frame, it's time to start putting the bathroom together. I have found that installing the faucet before you put the sink in is a lot easier than me crawling under the sink and trying to install the faucet after. So I'm gonna install the faucet first and then I'll put the sink in. Hi kitty, you wanna help? supposed to put the nut first before I put the water lines because now the nut doesn't fit so now I have to take the water lines off I probably shouldn't be doing plumbing don't take advice from me I installed the drain but then realized that I forgot to hit record so sorry but there's the drain all right so I'm just doing the silicone to like hold the countertop down uh, so like once it dries it'll hold it kind of keep it from moving around and then when I put it on I am gonna seal it around it that was not helpful at all Tony I need you because I put the silicone nowhere near where the actual countertop is it all went to, through the whole opening or whatever put your hand more towards the middle so I can actually uh, you can there you go you can kind of hold it by the faucet, but I don't want you to do the full force on the no. faucet. <sighs> okay, great. Now I made the mess I did not want to make at all. Will you bring me paper towels, please? And I ruined my shirt. Okay, I'm done with the silicone, so until tomorrow, I should, hopefully, <laughs> be able to be done with this bathroom tomorrow. Now I'm just filling up the sink to see if it's leaking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain it all at once and it'll tell me when it drains, it'll, it'll have enough pressure to find out if it's leaking or not. No leaking. Oh, I did good. Look what I just got. First, I gotta make sure it's the right size. So we'll go about there. Like, yeah, no, it doesn't look like it's gonna overlap the mirror. So this is gonna work. <laughs> Bless you. That looks so much better, doesn't it? All right, now it's time to deal with this shower curtain. So my plan is actually to hang the shower curtain all the way from the ceiling down. 
but I couldn't find a shower curtain that was the right size. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang it and see how much it overhangs. And because it's a fabric, I'm gonna hem it. So I just gotta measure to see how much I have to hem it. Um, it's not like that bad, it's not that much, but I just know this being a light color, leaving it dragging on the floor like that. Um, I don't really like how it looks and it'll get dirty quickly. So um, I just wanna hem it enough to where it doesn't, doesn't touch the floor. This bathroom is super small and the reason I wanted to hang the curtain from the ceiling is because it makes the bathroom look bigger than what it is. Sewing isn't one of my strong skills, I just learned last year because I like going to cosplay conventions and as a DIYer, of course I enjoy making my own costumes. like it you love it I love it too came out good didn't it I'm really glad I decided to go with a really tall curtain okay let's go to finishing touches So I forgot about the hanging towel, so I had to move the picture up and add hooks underneath. I also didn't realize that these hooks are double-sided tape instead of anchor and screw, so I will probably change them later to something more sturdy. I love it it came out so nice like it was everything I was picturing and more a couple of my design goals was to make this bathroom look elegant and also bigger because this is a tiny bathroom so I did that by hanging the curtain all the way from the ceiling down and then also doing this long rug on the floor those two things alone like make this bathroom look so much bigger than what it actually is and i love that that was that was done on purpose to try to you know expand the space visually at least the other design choices were actually a little bit out of my comfort zone because i've never really decorated with gold before and i didn't want to go full gold so i did black because i love black so i did black and gold and I really like how that combination turned out. Even though I went over budget, I really went over budget. <laughs> Everything started going downhill budget-wise when I decided to change the countertop. But imagine being at this point with the bathroom finish and having that ugly countertop. Even though I went over budget, if you look at it from what an average remodel in a bathroom costs, I'm actually saving thousands of dollars. This bathroom looks so much different, so much better compared to what it was before. You know, you, you don't always have to rip out everything to the studs and redo it. 
you can spend a few hundred dollars and make your bathroom look nice. And not only that, but the pride that I built this. I mean, I built the countertop from scratch, the mirror, the shelves, and you know, everything else I kind of just modified, but I, I pretty much made this happen. When you like make something that you're proud of, it's, it's such a good feeling. Thank you everyone that joined me in this journey. I have many more projects coming up, so stay tuned and I will see you in the next video. So this is the finished bathroom. So what do you think? Wow, what an amazing job. I am so proud of you. Thank but you. I can't wait to go to Florida and take a poop in that bathroom. Thank <laughs> you.